Hello everyone, my name is Janus Rasmussen and here's my track Nay. I'm an artist and producer based here in Reykjavik, Iceland, and today I'm gonna show you how I produce my latest single. Okay, so today we're gonna take a look at my song called Nay. It's out on Key Records, and uh, I wanna show you how I started writing this song. And it all started with um, some field recordings I did outside of my studio. There used to be a fish factory, and there was a lot of containers and just all sorts of machinery that looked really tempting to go. Uh, bang on with a couple of drumsticks and see if I could get some interesting sounds. And sure enough, there's something there. And that's how what initiated the song. So let's go here into the project. And if we find this one called Percussion Loop, listen to that one. Let's take a look at the waveform. So. I basically went through a long file of, of recording. I did just one long file, basically. It's like 10 minutes long. I just brought my field recorder and banged on a bunch of stuff. And then I found all these snippets, like loops that I found. And I, this one I bounced down and then I warped it to get a rhythm like this and transposed it a little bit down. And then I did this setting here that I love to play around with. Is you have it on beats on the algorithm of the warp and you pick this section here, preserve only from the transients on, and then you make this shorter. So if I make it longer, you will hear that it sustains more of, uh, after the transients, it will sustain more after them. Uh, and there, they're really short. I love to play around with this function. There's even more percussion like this. Um, I wanted to, to be pretty, you know, uh, lively and, and kind of random. I was trying, kind of looking for something to inspire me, something that feels like uh, it wrote itself. I, I really love to write like, like that, my percussion parts like that. So here we see some MIDI for this. And one more here. One more here. They're all made the same way. I take these I take these long field recordings, I put them into a simpler, put into the slice mode, and then I just move it around, the playhead around, and uh, here I even change the sensitivity a little bit. And then just play on the keyboard on my Ableton push and see if I can get some kind of pattern out, out, out of it. So for example, with this one, Um, I just found that I could almost use it like a rim shot or a snare. It's just me playing on some kind of container or whatever it is. And you can see it's just playing the, they're really close. So I'm just playing like with my hand, like three, four uh, keys at the same time, like and a little bit, just I'm a little bit doing a flam on them all. So I get this kind of feeling like this. You can see they're not perfectly aligned like that. That way you get this kind of flam and uh, lively sound out of them. This one is just simply a pattern that I found. It's super random, but it's, it's interesting. They've all been processed a little bit, like this one in here. I did a high cut and then a low cut after it, even more here. I just didn't want them to take up too much space, basically, so I kind of contained them a little bit down to a certain region in the spectrum. You can see they're all, they're all processed quite a bit. So the next thing that I wrote for the song was the piano part. And I basically just let the percussion loop run in the background. And I sat down on my piano and I started fiddling around with the chord uh, progression. And this is what I came up with. So on it goes. Um, 
I quite like it. It's pretty simple. It's not too, you know, it's not moving around too much and it's not resolving too much either. Or at least I don't think so. So um, then I tried to make it a little bit more spacious. So first I did some EQing and here you can see the basic EQing of the piano. Just helping all out a little bit in the mid uh, region, just shaping it a little bit. After that, I love to use the Slate Digital Mix Rack to the Neve uh, EQ here is just so good for this extra color. So this is a lot of the color from the piano is happening here. If I turn it off, it sounds like this. Yeah, sounds good. After that, it's just a glue compressor, taming it a little bit more. And that, um, and then it comes like the kind of special sauce, and that is this portal plugin from uh, Output. It's quite good to make some kind of interesting kind of granular delay stuff. If I put on the wet all the way, maybe we can hear it better. Gives it kind of a pumping kind of thing. I just didn't want it wanted to sound like a just a normal piano. I want some something that to spice it up a little bit. I like spice. That was uh, I didn't like to only use that as the main theme of the song, so I just came up with well, let's just pitch it down an octave. You know, it's always a nice way to make a contrast to the main piano. So here it is in the low pianos. <laughs> So this is actually how the song starts and the main kind of piano actually became the main piano because I really like to pitch down like this. So the a lot of the work is being done here from also por Portal. I think I'm doing a little bit more on this one. Or is it just the same setting? That could be. Same preset, same thing. It's just it's this kind of wop, 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 kind of pumping feeling. I'm doing so much EQ here, like it's just... This is the first EQ on this piano. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. I kind of treated it as sound design. And then, you know, after the portal, there's even there was even more kind of muddiness going on. Fixed even more, more high end. I'm just, I really liked how um, when I pitched the piano down, these uh, the artifacts, you know, you can hear all those. They become really pronounced and strange. So I really want to even, you know, exaggerate th that even more. So put all the high end in the world on that. And <laughs> then, yeah, you, you have a lot of mechanics uh, working in the piano. <laughs> uh, here, even more high ends, even more everything, basically. I, I'm, I'm going pretty crazy, I know that. Last <laughs> EQ on the piano. Uh, yeah, what can I say? It does the job. After that, um, the last in the chain, there's a track spacer. Uh, this is, is uh, doing my uh, side chain for the piano when the kick comes in. So instead of uh, side chaining uh, the whole signal, so it's a pumping, I only wanted to side chain the lower region. So you can hear this once the, the drums come in. You can see it's only working um, on the lower region of, of the sound because for the song I kind of decided that I didn't really want it to pump too much I wanted it to be kind of open the entire time but obviously it's electronic music so you have a lot of bass going on so you need some kind of side chaining and you know side chaining only the subs basically and uh, lets you do that so you can actually side chain but without it the whole signal docking the entire time which mostly uh, you hear the most if um, if you're side chaining the the high end of the signal, that's what's giving you the most kind of pronounced ducking effect. I feel the rest of the piano is I made a a reverse piano for for the section after the low piano. Now this sweep is just made by reversing the the last chord of the piano here. And then putting on a chain of the same EQ, I think. But the, mostly what's happening here is this auto pan is being automated. So if I open up the um, auto pan here, you can see that 
I'm doing this automation to make it go. And also, I'm using the rate and the amount to do this. I have a whole video about this effect and exactly actually on this song. Uh, it's called Reverse Piano. It's on my channel, Jan Strassmussen. So, nice effect. Just something to glue the sections together. You know, make a transition out of what you got. It's something I really like. Use elements you already have in the song. Uh, so that you don't need to add something if you don't need to add something. Cool. Let's move on to the next element of the song that I wrote, and that's the bass. When I wrote the song, I had just MIDI retrofitted my vintage MS-20. So I obviously wanted to use it in the song. And um, that's what I did, and the bass is all with the MS-20. Let's have a listen to the MS-20. This is kind of growly kind of song, but I did some processing then uh, to it. Let's see. So this is the bass here. First off, of course, there's some EQing going on. Um, like, without it. With it. A little bit cleaner, a little bit more high end. Take out some of that 500 kind of classic thing you do with synth bass, I think. But here's kind of the secret sauce. I make a chain uh, out of the signal and I make one dry and then one wet. On the wet, I put a reverb and then I have this, it's called Raw. It's, it's modeled after Turbo Rat, which, which is one of my favorite guitar pedals. Uh, it's just like this fuss distortion pedal, which is absolutely lovely. And uh, then I put some auto filter after it. I do this because this plugin here doesn't have a dry wet knob. so. Uh, I just do it so I can mix in some of it with the dry signal. So you can hear here, this is only dry. This is only wet. And then what I could do now is just like mix the wet into the dry. So like... I really like to do that. The reverb I, I put in front of the raw just to put it more into a room, you know, and, I, and also just to give it more... Uh, more the distortion more to work with. If I take off the, the reverb, you will hear what happens. Let's just maybe only listen to the wet. Put on the reverb. It's also because I've cranked up here, I've cranked up the, the stereo knob. So I'm just trying to make it more stereo so that there's more stereo-ness for the the distortion to work with. So the song progresses and there's a new layer and it's again the MS-20. I just wanted it to kind of expand. So the bass is doing a lot of heavy lifting in the song and uh, I'm just adding on another another layer. So there's one coming in the middle of the song and then later in the song there's a, even one more. So like the top layer to kind of finish the song off. So here's an interesting thing. Uh, after I recorded it, um, I discovered later on that it was a little bit too, what can I say? Like I have a transient designer here and you can hear it without it, it sounds like this. I, I wanted to be a little bit more percussive and I just didn't feel like recording it again. I liked the sound, so I, was, I tried if there was something I could do to get more percussiveness into it. And transient designers are amazing for that. Let's put it on. You get a little bit of a tang tang, you know, like a plucky sound. And uh, yeah, transient designers, amazing for that. Again, on the bass, I'm doing again the tr uh, track spacer, also on the normal low bass here. You can see it has a track spacer on it. So with the drums, you, you can hear it here. Again, because I didn't want it to be pumping too much, but I still needed to, you know, take care of this low end, the kick and the bass, you know. I didn't want them to clash too much. Track spacer is amazing for that. In the very ending of the song, we have one more layer with a bass that I just, I think this is just, yeah, I just, just pro took the, the mid bass or the harmony bass and I just transposed it up. So it's like this. It sounds a little bit artifacty. I, I put it on complex. It's plus five, not nine, but at this section of the song is so busy that I didn't feel like it was, I didn't really, care too much. I was in a, on a roll, you know. Sometimes <laughs> I, I could go again and record it again. I just didn't feel like I, I wanted to. I just wanted to finish the song. Also, 
sometimes it's just nice. If it has artifacts, it can be cool. And with all this distortion that's going on in, the, in this uh, audio unit, uh, the dry wet and everything, it, it just turned out really cool. So it's like this. And again with the transit designer to give it that pluck. So let's hear them all together now, the, the bass sounds. Pretty cool, I think. It gets pretty big. And then, and then you can see there's some uh, automation on the filter that I recorded when I did the original recording. So it finished off the song just building up all the way through. Now next up is the Juno plucks or like synth plucks that I use in the song. And uh, the first one that comes in is this one. It's just a Juno uh, going through a little bit of effects here. So if I take everything off, it sounds like this. And then I do a lot of EQing, you know, I just kind of, I only wanted it to be in a specific region of the song, so this is what it was. And then I added um, an Echo Boy, just doing a 16th ping pong note kind of thing. Just to make it bigger. Some reverb, and then track spacer again, doing the same kind of pumping on the low region. There are even more plucks here, so these are really cool. This is kind of the, the later pluck that comes in the song, and you listen to the layer here. So this is actually a Juno pluck that's here, plus uh, a piano pluck. So it's, it's two layers, it's this one and this one. It's basically just pitched down. Um, this is like, I, I put tape over the strings of the piano, and then uh, it gets really plucky. It almost sounds like, I don't know, a hapsichord piano, harp. It, it's really hard to describe, but it gets super percussive, and I love that. Yeah, this is just because I just wanted something new because we already have a Juno pluck sound in the song, so introducing another one that's exactly the same, I just, I just wanted it to sound a little bit different. So I found that this was a cool way to kind of make it sound more organic, you know, just mix in a piano recording like this. Uh, most of the heavy lifting of the sound of it is coming from the slate here. A lot of EQing on the Neve. And then some compression. Cool, so next is always, I need some kind of, you know, something to spice up the song. So ambiences are great for that. And after the Juno plucks, I think I, I made some ambiences. Uh, let's go here to this channel called Juno Weirdness, and let's listen to that. So I have a video called uh, Ambiences, uh, one of my newer videos, where I go through how I make this. What I do is I record my Juno through my Space Echo, and then I do a lot of processing after it. So here's the EQing, and this... Valhalla Vintage Verb, it's almost 100%, so it's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Like, let's take all of this off, see how this sounds without it. I just did one long take throughout it to kind of build out throughout the whole section. And uh, yeah, a lot of processing. And the auto pan is also doing some automation here. But in the end of the song, it's going doing... Again, that rev -va -va -va, just to, you know, make kind of a finale to the song. This is the final section. Uh, I like that sort of stuff. There's also one point where I use um, Solina. It's the plugin from Arturia. It's just doing one note throughout the, one of the section. Um, it's a simple tone like that, but it does so much in the song. So let's listen to it uh, without it and then with it. subtle but it does so much it just makes some kind of eeriness you know just creeping in the background you know i i, I really like it it's super good for this string machines are amazing for that just hold in one note throughout the whole section put it really low in the background it's it's uh, it's it's sexy stuff okay next up is the vocals actually this um 
This vocal line came to me really early in the song. So let's listen to them here on solo. Understand a book This is my vocal ch main vocal chain. Can this love on top? So I'm heavy EQing here e uh, and compression. And then the monster is kind of funny. It's like I use it for a pretty heavy um, parallel compression. So I put it on 50%. It's absolutely smashing. Can this love on time? Here we get into the more kind of nitty gritty of things. We have a MOOC filter here from UID. And as you can see, it's kind of opening up throughout the whole section of the song so it's really close in the beginning so it's kind of annoying it's kind of, because there there are lyrics in the song but i didn't want them to be super clear straight away it's not supposed to be like a pop song it's supposed to be electronic electronic they're just another element in the song so uh, let's uh, hear it without it can this love on time my now that in the song then it was just a full-blown pop song but with the filter can this love on time my it's cool and uh if you hear if you listen closely you can hear all these kind of weird artifacts in the song it almost sounds like uh, the idea for me was kind of came from using the chaos pad a uh, core chaos pad a lot live and i wanted to recreate that just with a plugin and uh, i found that portal from output could do that so i'm writing the uh, dry wet here so it's coming on sometimes on the ending of of sentences i'm writing it up like this Book friends, all the just to make make it kind of more spooky and weird so a little bit blurring the the lyrics but here again nights, chasing them come right in, to yeah i just really like that yeah that was all cool and then i had the breakdown of the song and i just i uh, I wanted the vocals still to be there, but not. They, I, I needed them to not to sing the entire song, basically. But I still wanted the listener to remember there are vocals in the song. And then I thought of, you know, why not try some vocal chops? And this is what it ended up being. So uh, I just took the the vocals and made a group for them and add some, called them ad lips, but they're all just kind of like more filtered down. And uh, I just found some really small s snippets of audio and made a pattern. So here you can hear. This is like a longer one and then really tiny ones here. That's cool. And then I think there are some, what are the processing here? Really uh, extreme kind of narrow EQing. And then the RC, the RC20 retro color to make it, you can hear I'm using some bit reduction actually on it. I don't use bit reduction a lot, but here I did. Just to make it more like, sound like a sample. Then, yeah, the OTT. I never used this thing. I like what it did here. It's kind of cool. I don't know. If I, I'm just smashing it, basically. I just try to make it sound really aggressive and, you know, just make it cut in the mix as well. It, it helps. Something I really liked here, I wanted it to still continue, but I'm going to sing again in the end of the song. So I had to find a way to get it out of the way of my lead vocals. So I just decided to pitch them an octave down when they came come in again. just took the whole thing and pitched them down an octave so they're out of the way of when the vocals come in back here. Can this love it just tucked underneath my vocal there. So that was one way for me to figure that out. Okay, we're almost done here. The final thing I want to go through is one of the details I'm really proud of this, of the song is this sweep in the ending of the song, like kind of the biggest climax of the song. So we have, a, have this part here. Let's listen to it. Yeah. 
So cool. That is my MS20 again, a sweep. You can see an MS sweep. And I, to do this effect, you can hear the whole song is kind of ducking underneath the sweep. And how I did this is I took the whole song and put it into a group. So here's song, here's MS sweep. And this is uh, what it sounds like. Listen, listen to that. It's just one sweep. And then with some EQ and again with the dry wet chain there, you can hear without the... That's a distortion. This is dry together. And then what I did, I put on the whole song group. I have a sidechain compression there. So I wanted the whole song to sidechain to the sweep, like, you know, be tucked underneath it. So I put the compressor on the whole drums group and made it listen to the MS sweep here. And let's see that. Yeah, let's see that in action. Look here. It's just kind of ducking it down there. I really like that effect. Um, so yeah, that's about it. So if you like this content, uh, you can go over to my own channel. I'm Janus Rasmussen. I make these videos quite frequently. And thank you Production Music Live for having me on their channel. I hope this uh, was interesting to you and seeing how I produce my music. And yeah, until next time, toodaloo.